Live from Seattle, Washington, it's The Cube at Tableau Conference 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Tableau. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Kelly. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Seattle, Washington for theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal the noise for Tableau's end user conference, Data14, that's the hashtag, Data14, go to crowdchat.net slash Data14. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier with my co-host Jeff Kelly, our next guest, Chris Selland, who's a VP of BizDev and marketing for HP Vertica. Mm -hmm. Chris, welcome back to theCUBE, great to see you again. It is always a pleasure. I think you've been on, you're pushing the, uh, on the top tier of, of CUBE alum, you've been involved yeah. uh, with us for many years. We've seen this movie kind of evolve and I'm excited to talk to you because we just had a great event with you guys kind of extracting out all the info about your customer base um, called the Ferrari. I think I coined you guys mm -hmm. as the Ferrari of, uh, of uh, a big data confirmed by uh, uh, Colin Mahoney. Um, but more importantly, you guys now have a lot of big uh, customers in the sweet spot of the market, the mid-range as mm -hmm. well, not just the Ferrari. You're becoming a great engine for the data. Mm -hmm. But visualization is the killer app. So yeah. You, you're here obviously because of uh, Tableau. Mm -hmm. So talk about the relationship between Tableau and HP. Um, yep. Seems pretty obvious, some might not connect the dots, but share with us and connect the dots. Well, it, it really goes back to when Vertica was an independent company prior to being acquired by HP. Re well, actually when both companies were startups. I mean, when Tableau and Vertica started at a similar time, um, really the partnership really started early on. So back in those days when both organizations were a lot smaller, the products are just, you know, perfect fit. So it's uh, like chocolate and peanut butter, right? I mean, it's uh, products really work well together. They've worked well together from the get-go. I mean, when you're doing visualization, the whole idea of visualization has just taken off. I mean, so it, it, it just makes all of this analytics, I wouldn't even say big data analytics, but just analytics in general, so much more meaningful to non-technical audiences and gets it embraced throughout the organization. But you need a powerful engine to drive it. And so, and we can provide that. And so I think the last time, uh, I think the last time Tech Validate, who's this firm who goes and surveys our customers every year, it was somewhere in the mid 30% range of our customers are using Tableau and vice versa. So, so it's a great relationship. We have tons of joint customers, uh, really good cultural fit too. So. Jeff, Jeff Kelly and I were talking earlier about how we've been to pretty much all the Hadoop events, mm -hmm. which kind of kicked off the big data world and certainly didn't kick off the big data usage. Big data's been around for a while, as people know, but certainly the, that whole open source open source ethos kind of drove from there. And mm -hmm. there was a moment, like I think three years ago or four years ago, um, there was a big push for a tsunami of apps that were going to come out mm -hmm. in big data. Just, you know, Mike Olson was like, oh yeah, we're going to do this. Ping Lee from Excel Partners had a big fund. It just never happened. There's been, there hasn't been a tsunami of big data apps. Mm -hmm. There's been a tsunami of apps all using big data. Um, so the real dynamic is, Every app is a big data app, in, in some, or data app at some level. Mm -hmm. But also visualization maintains the killer app status. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? Do you, do you see that visualization maintains the big data killer app status? And do you agree that all apps have a big data component? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I would you sort disagree. of. It's, it's okay. No, I, I guess I would sort of drop the big because it's not necessarily relevant. I mean, what Tableau has been about is democratizing data and not just democratizing data, but analytics and making it accessible to, so, you know, it's not just a CIO, but a CMO and a COO, and, you know, I always make jokes about when you say Hadoop to CMO, they say, God bless you, right? But, you know, it's not, I mean, obviously there's some very powerful technology running here, but what the, what the value proposition of this audience is about, and this event is about, is making this meaningful to the business. So I'm not just looking at rows and columns and talking about file formats, but I'm, you know, I'm looking at heat maps, I'm looking at, you know, the kinds of things that actually move and let me, let me see what's going on in my business. And so whether the data is big, small, or indifferent, uh, or big, small, or in the middle, I guess I should say, um, it, it's really, it's a sort of a different value proposition. So it's not so much about big data, it's about democratized data, it's about making it accessible and making it meaningful to the entire organization, not just the techies. Because the Hadoop world is still the world of the techies, I guess is what I was saying before. So, and that's, a different audience, and there's not that there's not hardcore technology work here, and that the, there's not techn technical people here. There are plenty, but this is really about spreading it and spreading the word, and that's why, you know, I always say big data is kind of in a crossing the chasm period, right? Where you you got to make it meaningful to those non-technical users, and Tableau's done a fabulous job of that. 
So Chris, talk about Tableau, the company. You, yep. As you mentioned earlier, you guys have been partners for years. You kind of, you, you've grown up kind of alongside Tableau. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Tableau, the knock on Tableau, you know, two, three years ago was that it was, you know, it was a, it was a good uh, tool, but it wasn't really enterprise grade, enterprise mm -hmm. ready. How have you seen Tableau, both the company evolve and, the, and their technology uh, portfolio as well? Yeah, well, you know, I think that's, that's kind of your traditional knock by the incumbents, you know, sort of, I mean, we hear it from the data warehouse guys too, you know, so, but, you know, the thing is it, it becomes less and less true and it becomes less and less important over time, right? So, I think they've done a fabulous job of spreading the word, I mean, going across the market and, you know, when you talk about visualization these days, I think for most people it's the first name that comes up, so, and, you know, that's, I, I mean, like I said, it's a great sort of symbiotic relationship we have. Um, but it's really about democratizing data, and again, it's about making it meaningful. So whether it's big, small, or indifferent, you know, or in the middle, I keep saying indifferent, but I mean in the middle. Um, but, um, you know, we're, we're really about kind of just making it accessible, and making it available to everybody, making it understandable. So what does this mean? So that's really what Tableau's done a great job of. Yeah, I think, I, I agree with you. I mean, I think mm -hmm. some of those, those knocks that Tableau was getting, of course, you know, FUD being spread by competitors, and, yeah. but to some extent, I think it was also coming from IT a little bit, which mm -hmm. felt like there was kind of an end run around IT with Tableau, mm -hmm. which is part of their value proposition. Mm -hmm. um, but clearly, I think Tableau well, is, well. It's what, what we call shadow IT. Right, right? shadow so, IT. Yeah, but that exactly. was part of the value proposition uh, of mm -hmm. Tableau, is that, hey, look, you don't want to wait two months for IT mm -hmm. to come back with some right. report. Right. I'm just going to download Tableau, or, uh, install Tableau and do it myself. Right. Uh, but I think they've, they've clearly added some capabilities around uh, management, enterprise management, mm -hmm. bringing IT into the equation. You have to. Right. Yeah, and so I, I'm curious, so from your perspective as a, as a vendor and, and your customer base, you, I think you mentioned 30% or so mm -hmm. of, of your customers are using Tableau. Has right. that been kind of on a steady increase? Um, are you seeing any patterns in terms of the usage of Tableau associated with uh, your customer base? Uh, yeah, I mean, to your point about enterprise, it's certainly getting bigger and we're seeing them in larger organizations. We tend to cater to many larger organizations as well, you know, the very high end where you really are talking about big data. Um, but I think, you know, again, I think it's very typical for how new technology and disruptive technology gets adopted. And as I was saying earlier in sort of the histories of Tableau and the histories of Vertica, in both cases, we're disruptive. In Vertica's case, we're really disruptive to the data warehouse market. Tableau's case, they were very disruptive to the BI market. And so, you know, and those things come together and they fit together really nicely. So, and those who are being disrupted are going to say, well, it's not an enterprise class. Because what happens is initially you get into these larger organizations that do have the very powerful central IT, and we don't want to be their enemy, but what happens is that, you know, the people on the periphery, the field offices, the branch offices, I mean, this is Salesforce.com grew as well. They need to get stuff done. They can't wait for this monolithic organization to make decisions, so they start doing stuff on their own. But eventually, as that stuff starts to become important in the organization, it has to get centralized, so you have to be able to work. So like I said, nobody, I don't think anybody here is trying to be the, the enemy of central IT, but you know, it's a matter of kind of how you come in. It's not, you don't come in through the central organization and profile it out. You sort of go in through the edges of the organization and come in, and that's how disruption happens. Mm. So that's how Vertica grew, that's how Tableau grew. I don't want to speak for them, but I'm sure they would agree with that. That's how Salesforce.com grew. So, that's how new technology gets introduced very commonly, and it's, you know, it's the dynamic of this industry. So. Well, the reporting that we've been giving on Tableau has been pretty straightforward. The product leadership has been great. Customer mm -hmm. testimonials are fantastic. Yep. You guys have a lot of overlap. There's a huge international push now. Certainly they're still losing money as a public company, uh, but they still have a lot of money in the bank. Um, so talk about the international expansion mm -hmm. around your customer base and Tableau. Seems to be a big discussion point. Mm -hmm. Do you agree, are you writing? That wave with them, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, can you share any commentary on that? Absolutely, absolutely, the relationship's worldwide. I mean, I, you know, I kind of am point on this relationship and I get calls and emails from all over the world about where we're working together. So, and again, you know, both of us have very broad ecosystems. We work with each other's competitors as well. We need to, because I think it comes back to the first thing you mentioned, which is customers. You know, and I think that's one of the, when I said earlier, I think it was in response to you, Jeff, that there's a great cultural fit, I think probably the, the most important thing, I mean the most important thing, is the fact that we're both really focused on the success of our customers. You know, and when you're focused on making your customers successful, you can't just have one partnership. But what happens is when you've got a great cultural affinity with a partner like Tableau, well then, you know, you wind up having lots of joint customers and lots of joint happy customers, which is a great thing to have. So talk so. about the business model. You were referencing that's how business gets done right mm -hmm. now. Obviously, there's a real, kind of tension in the enterprise software business where the old days was you come in, make the big sales pitch, mm -hmm. you know, go golfing, whatever they got to do to get the deal done. Big license fee, mm -hmm. um, you lock them in. 
and then you got to deal with it, right? And then prove the value. Right. This whole freemium model, and I'm not going to say Tableau's freemium, but it is well, easy. Well, it's more to, land than expand. It's really easy to get involved yep. in a right. very low cost basis to right. get it going, right. and then people are growing from that. Seems to be the chosen business model. Mm -hmm. How do you guys play in with that? Does Vertic have the same approach? Um, and do you think that is now the new standard? Um, I think it's an important model. I, there's all sorts of different types of models. I mean, as you probably know, we give Vertic away up to a terabyte. We give the community edition away. Anybody can use Vertic and download it freely from our website for free, full featured, no restriction whatsoever, up to a terabyte of data, which is quite a bit of data. So, you know, so to some degree, you could call that a freemium model, although we also give away to a lot of academic nonprofit, because we're also trying to build a base of people who are, who are skilled with Vertica, but I think to some degree, yeah, you could call it a freemium strategy. I think the whole, calling it a land and expand strategy, which I know is terminology that I think Tableau uses, is, you know, exactly. So you land in these different places where there are needs, you take care of the needs, you make the customers happy, and it expands in the organization. So, so yes, I, I, you know, I don't think it's identical, well, but I, I mean, think we're following similar Well, I mean, land and expand is an industry term. It sounds mm -hmm. almost like, you know, land grab, uh, but yeah. I'm not going to say land grab because mm -hmm. it's not land grab. But shadow IT has certainly been this new cloud phenomenon where you know the needs of the user groups or the, or the users or the business units mm -hmm. really are top priority right now. Yep. We've heard all the customers say, get out where the users are and go from there, not try to figure it out in IT and then deploy. So land and grab, land and expand mm -hmm. is subjective based on your approach. Do you, how do you guys deal with that? Getting out where the needs are. You guys do that? I well, mean, that, again, that's why we give away so much community edition. But I, I, you know, it's not so much the model; it's that the users are realizing they don't have to wait anymore, and you know, they are able to basically, um, you know, get their needs met, and they can, you know, acquire technology on their own at a very low cost. And you know, it might not solve all of their needs; it might not give them access to all of the data right away, but it'll it'll get them started. And so that's how a lot of this stuff gets in. And you know, the enlightened IT organizations, and certainly as part of the world's largest, largest IT or largest IT provider, I guess. Um, you know, we work with a lot of large IT organizations. They realize this. The enlightened ones realize this. They realize they need to move quickly. So it's made everybody more nimble. So even if the decisions are centralized, or at least central IT is in the room, which is really how it should be to have it be as a successful long-term relationship. You know, there's there's a need to move much more much more quickly, much faster, be much more nimble. So, you know, you, so you mentioned a couple times. Really, one of the keys being very customer focused. Yes. So, I think one of the one of the challenges for for a company like Tableau as they grow is is keeping that customer focus with mm -hmm. the, the breakneck pace that they are are growing, both mm -hmm. in terms of employees, new customers. Yep. What's your advice to Tableau? How do they stay close to the customer when they are growing so fast yeah. and do it in a way that's, you know, because when you come to the show, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the community here is very excited. Yep. Clearly they're doing the right thing so far, but as they continue to grow, it could be a challenge. What's your that, advice for that? That is the hard thing. And, um, you know, it's, it, I think it's two things. I think it's first of all, when the customers know that you deliver an excellent product, that goes a long way. So focus on continued product excellence, which I think, you know, Tableau has done tremendously well and there's some other hardware company that's having at a big event today, you know, who's also done the same thing. So that in and of itself engenders tremendous customer loyalty and we focus on the same thing. So, because you're right, you can't possibly, when you're in sort of hyper growth mode, which, you know, we are, they are, I mean, you can't be as close to every customer every day because you're just growing so fast. And then the other thing is build an ecosystem around the company, around the products as well. Because, you know, the more partners you have who are, you know, and they have to be knowledgeable partners, they have to build expertise, and that's a challenge in and of themselves. But, you know, I know, and I'll speak for ourselves, that's what we're spending a lot of time, and that's what I spend a lot of time on personally, is the ecosystem around Vertica, and the ecosystem around Tableau, and the big data ecosystem. And so leveraging the ecosystem as much as possible, because it is, it's, you know, it's a good news, bad news thing, because when you're in this mode where you're just growing and booming, and everybody's buying your product, it is hard to stay hands on with every customer every day, but if the product's great, and the ecosystem is a focus, you can keep it going, and so that's, you know, that's our model, and, you know, I, like I said, I wouldn't speak for Tableau, but I'm pretty sure that's a big part of their model as well. So Chris, I want to get your opinion on something. You guys have the big data marketplace. Some are saying it's not developing as fast as it should be. I want to get your comment on that. Um, some, um, huh? Who's some, some? Some, well, I'll, maybe. You? Me, maybe. Okay. All right. <laughs> that's new, but it's new. I mean, it's a big okay. uh, developer focus. Yeah. Um, uh, but also, <laughs> well, let's just start with that. Go, go with that. Are, are yeah. you happy with the performance of the marketplace um, for HP? You mean the the apps, the, apps. the online marketplace, the, the online marketplace. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. We you know we set us up about six months ago. We put it out there. We've been monitoring and seeing how customers have been using it. And yeah, we're getting 
we're getting good adoption. We haven't pushed hard on it, but the more products we've put in it, the more customers are using it, the more they're using it, the more feedback we're getting, the more feedback we're getting, the more partners want to come and be in it. So yeah, it's been, it's been growing nicely for us, and we're actually putting a lot more weight behind it as we go forward. It's still so you'll early. Be a lot more. Still it early. is still very it's still early. still early, and plus HP Software is mm -hmm. a big group, not just your group. Right. Well, that was kind of my, I didn't mean to kind of put you on the spot there, no, but that's I, guess, okay. I guess I did, but. I just but, wasn't sure what you said about the marketplace, but I, I, I No, you sure have a developer right. focus, right. which is, again, that's early, and mm -hmm. so my real question was weaving into um, this developer market, and, mm -hmm. and I got to ask you as more of an analyst, because you've been an analyst in your career, so I want to get the Chris Seedland perspective, not so much the HP sure. perspective, is there are a lot of IT guys out there, decision makers, betting their job on, on platforms and, and products. Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of, um, I don't say vapor, I would just say not mature enough platforms, mm -hmm. and the stakes are high now. The ROI has to be there, value has to be there. We talked about the price point land versus mm -hmm. big price point versus get in, land yep. in, expand, try it before you buy freemium, whatever you want to call it. So, but Everyone's inundated right now with some pitch or messaging around, buy my platform, buy my platform, mm -hmm. here's a tool. Mm -hmm. And I hear this quote all the time. If someone comes in and says, I want to see, buy another tool, you know, shoot me in the head. There's mm -hmm. so much bombardment yeah. at the C CXO level. Mm -hmm. So I want you to share your perspective. How should customers evaluate those kinds of bet the job decisions? Mm -hmm. Whether it's data, mm -hmm. platforms, whether it's visualization, Obviously the value and the outcome has to be business success, but as an analyst, how would you talk to customers saying, hey, if you're going to look at stuff, mm -hmm. here's the lens you should look at through. Yeah, well, I, I think tests on a small scale, and going back to you know, the earlier conversation we are having about kind of, in some cases it might not even be shadow IT, it just might be sort of a small test implementation, and you're seeing a lot of that in the Hadoop world right now. I know when you were at our conference a few weeks ago, I think Dave stood up and basically said, you know, how many are using Hadoop, all the hands go up, how many are paying for it, Most of the, almost all the hands go down, right? So there's a lot of early stage experimentation going on, and I think that's what's Healthy. happening is a lot of customers are doing exactly what you're describing. They're saying, well, you know, let's try this out on a small scale, but the other thing, and I think what's incumbent on the technology community to do, and you know, the vendors like us, is really not just show what the technology does anymore, but what organizations can do with it, which again, I talk about that crossing the chasm moment that, you know, that I believe this market's in, which is that, because that's the thing, you know, more and more customers don't really care about the features of the product and the speeds and feeds. They care about what other customers like them are doing. They don't necessarily want it to be their direct competitor, but what other customers are doing being successful. So this focus on customer success sort of creates a virtual cycle, if you will. So. That's yeah, and, really their, and their messaging today was experimentation, fast experimentation mm -hmm. is what they call it. Some people call it agile iteration, mm -hmm. continuous development. But the interesting thing was they said in the analogy today, um, they used digital photography and they said, when the cost of film went to zero, right. massive creativity happened. So how would you Not take Not in Rochester, the, New York, but yeah. So. <laughs> certainly Kodak, yeah. I could have bought yeah. you know, Instagram mm -hmm. worth a billion dollars. Right. But again, the point, value creation and creativity goes off the scale. Mm -hmm. Are, how do you take that analogy and apply it to your world? Mm -hmm. Right, you got, certainly you provide a lot of the storage and the, the engine for the data. Mm -hmm. You have platform for Haven for mm -hmm. extracting. Right. You got a relationship with Tableau. So how do you take that analogy and put it into HP terms? Well again, I think you, you turn it into and having happy customers, that's why Foundationally, I mean, the best, the most important thing you can do is focus on making your early customers successful, making them your advocates, because that's what, as the market starts to evolve and as the market starts to really hit, you know, as the, the sort of chasm group, Jeffrey Moore, you know, the tornado, if you will, in these later stages, that's what really drives, because it's, you know, the, the reality is there are absolutely some very innovative, leading edge CIOs, developers out there who are doing true cutting edge stuff but most of the world would really not want to be the pioneers with the arrows in their back. They want to see somebody else do it successful first. So if you're early in a market, get those first customers, make them happy, keep them on your side, keep them, you know, keep them growing, but then get them telling your stories because, and if they're happy with you, they're going to because they're going to want to tell their stories. It's good for their careers too. So that's really what it's all about. But that, that success feeds on itself and that's, that's really the model as far as, you know, at least in my opinion. So, so can you give us some examples of what kind of some of your joint customers, Tableau and Burke customers are doing these days? Um, do you see any trends there? What are some use cases that are kind of uh, yeah. bubbling up to the surface? You know, a lot of it is really around real-time and near real-time visualizations mm -hmm. and doing things like heat maps. And it's funny, I did a webinar this morning, although I did it with Hortonworks, um, not Tableau, but we were talking about customer analytics and what a big use case it is. And I mean, you know, things like sales trending heat maps and those sorts of visualizations 
you know, that, that's what, and we have so many joint customers, it's hard to say what this one and that one are doing, but those kinds of things. And, you know, show it to me in a visual way, show it to me in an interactive way, sort of provide it, and obviously then you got to have high performance, right? It can't be playing with my interactive visual dashboard and have it be laggy. I mean, it has to really snap, and that's why the, why the partnership works out so well. But I mean, those sorts of things. It's, you know, it's not necessarily rocket science in terms of what people are trying to understand. They're trying to understand, you know, what's happening with sales, what's happening with operations, what's happening with suppliers, and kind of look at it live in, if not real time, in new real time, and look at those kinds of trending things in an interactive way. That, you know, that in a nutshell is what. So is it kind of more, uh, more on the operational side, kind of getting a real time view of your business versus some of the big picture, let's step back and look at these really large trends, or? Or is that um, simplifying both, too much? Both, Like we do a lot of, you know, what's going on with my network, what, um, mm -hmm. that sort of, you know, what's going on with my business. We, we mm -hmm. definitely do a lot of that and we do a lot of that together. Mm -hmm. But there's also a lot of like sales trends, market trends, you know, who's buying what. We work very heavily in the retail space. You know, what's selling where, those sorts of things. So, and you could call that operations or you could call it more revenue focused. So, mm -hmm. but the short answer is both. So, uh, related to performance, obviously Vertica provides that real, uh, real time performance capabilities mm -hmm. with Tableau, but of course Tableau's kind of, as we heard in the keynote this morning, they're investing in their own kind of data engine, as they mm -hmm. call it. Where does kind of Vertica pick up where the Tableau engine leaves off? Is there any overlap there in terms of the, the, te the technology? And do you, see, do you see Tableau moving further, I guess, down the stack in a sense to the database layer? Yeah, I mean, you know, we've, we've been talking a lot internally to Vertica about, you know, what we sort of describe as data tiering, which is, you know, it's like hot, warm, cold data, and you could sort of have like hot, red hot, you know, and where do you sort of use in memory, like the data is available right away, as opposed to where do you need to fast but not that fast, as opposed to where is your more longitudinal data that you might call on once in a while, as opposed to where's the data that I might need every seven years for the re for the regulators. So, and you know, the reality is that so many organizations sort of think they need a single platform for their data, but it's really a multiplicity of platforms and capabilities, and it's where what Tableau is doing and what we're doing and what's going on with our partners Hortonworks and the Hadoop vendors are doing as well, it sort of all comes together because you know, there, there's really a need to sort of look at this in a holistic way and look at kind of you know, how fast I need it, what kind of performance I need, what kind of solutions I need, what I'm willing to pay for it, and it's not one answer across different types of applications and different types of data. There's a continuum of stuff going on, particularly with all these new forms of data, the social data, the internet, things data, the log files, so, and then of course I got to be able to secure it and all these other things. So, so you know, it really, it, it argues for much more, I mean, it is coming into the enterprise now and that's what's got to happen. We got to build, all build more features to support that and manage it and secure it, but that's really where the market is going. Chris, you guys have been the kind of the shiny jewel of HP software, Vertica kind of, still the engine that keeps on going, the gift that keeps on giving performance wise. <laughs> you guys have a lot of successful customers. Yes, we do. And, you know, I know you run your own event, and it's, you know, it's kind of like a guerrilla event, but you really have amazing customers. You have developers, but they're also practitioners. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to the marketplace? Share with folks why that is happening. Quick product commercial if you want, but don't go oh, too heavily. Yep. But, but in the marketplace, what is the market trend that's doing that? I mean, is this the new profile customer? Um, yeah, I think, you know, and I said it earlier, but I think success breeds success, right? And I think that's what, when the sort of, you know, the late majority, if you will, sort of sees the early adopters being successful, they want to replicate what they're doing. So, and so, uh, you know, that's, it's not about speeds and feeds and technology anymore, even though, you know, our product is very much about speeds and feeds and technology, but ultimately, organizationally, it's really about focusing on the customer. And it's, and it's also focusing on scaling in a way, to Jeff's question before, that, you know, as your customer base starts to get really big and starts to grow really fast, you can still support them and keep them happy, which A is product excellence, and B is really building an ecosystem around the product. So with us and Tableau, we're each part of each other's ecosystems. We got a fabulous relationship, and uh, you know, we're, we're thrilled to be here. So I got to ask you the marketing question. Dave Vellante and I were talking uh, last week and just recently this weekend, you know, all this debate around in Silicon Valley. I, I study how the VCs are investing, looking mm -hmm. at ecosystems. Yeah, and there's new business models out there. So if success, success breeds success, how do you market in that channel? Is it word of mouth? And then in commenting with Dave, I was like, if you look at Andreessen Horowitz, some of the venture models, it's, mm -hmm. it's vertically integrating ecosystems. So the ecosystem is not just a one trick pony marketing mm -hmm. tactic, it's an ongoing, sustained cadence. Absolutely. So how do you do those things? How do you market into these network effect ecosystems mm -hmm. as well as 
accelerate the success, breed success in these new social word of mouth environments? Well, that's a big question, so. <laughs> okay, we got three minutes. <laughs> yeah, we got, oh, we got three minutes, okay. So. I'll give you five. Um, you know, let me try to say this in a non-repetitive way because like I said, first of all, happy customers is, you know, the biggest answer, but um, yeah, it's really, it's also getting the product in as many hands as possible, but of course, having a good product because word of mouth, you know, is what drives so much today. As a matter of fact, it's funny, I'll, you know, I'll sort of answer that through a story because when I swung by my booth earlier, um, one of my colleagues was telling me that they were talking about how there's a, uh, one of the companies in the booth, and I don't even know the name, I'm not holding this back, I, he just told me the story anecdotally, has a statistical analysis product that's based on the R language, and I guess one of the um, guys who originally wrote R basically blessed the product recently in an online posting, and their daily downloads like went up 10x in a single day, right? So that positive word of mouth from an influential member of the community meant everything. And that's really what it is. So it's, I, I think I would say, you know, I keep talking about happy customers, happy customers, and you're probably tired of hearing that now, but it's happy customers, but it's also word of mouth, and it's word of mouth, of course, the happy customers are part of that, but sort of the influential users and the sort of influential people in the industry, you know, people well, like you guys, Well, you got, guys, my, hot right? you got so, my hot yeah. button going on. So okay. influentials, it mm -hmm. doesn't mean that blogger or cube host that has a zillion followers, or someone who people think is an influencer. This was a customer. Mm -hmm. So influence is not so much about a ranking as right. it is more about relevance, right? Is that, is that what you're basically saying? Well, you know what, it's, it's reaching credibility. And I think, you know, and then we're totally, you know, going into a whole different topic area now, but so much of the social world is focused just on reach, but if you have credibility and reach, that's very, very powerful. There's a lot of people with a lot of Twitter followers and a lot of reach, but they don't really have any credibility. So they may say something, it may get out to a big audience, but when you get those credible folks, and of course, you know, the customers who are actually doing it, you know, the, the companies who are actually achieving cool stuff with new technology definitely fall in that category. I mean, yeah, when you get, you get credibility and reach put together, that's very, very Yeah, powerful. I mean, a million followers doesn't translate directly into sales, basically, mm -hmm. what you're saying. Right. Not necessarily, so it certainly doesn't hurt but a million followers with no credibility, or no, you know, nobody really recognizes you in a, as an expert. So, you know. So I got to ask you, tell the folks yeah. out there, in your own words, why is Tableau so successful? I mean, you know, I have my opinion. I'll hold that. But, but mm -hmm. I said it on the intro package, on the intro segment. But in, you're in, you're in the industry again. You, you're a vet. You've seen yep. the cycles come and go, growth, yep. boom and bust cycles. You can recognize patterns. Yep. Why is Tableau so successful for the folks that aren't in the inside baseball? Yep, great product. So product excellence, great culture. I mean, you know, we've worked with these guys for guys and gals for many years, and I can tell you they've got a great culture and happy customers. And I mean, to me, it's like you put those three things together, you put together an excellent product, a culture, and obviously the culture has very much to do with the customer success, and you yeah. put those three things together and you've got a winner. And that sounds so simple. And it is simple to envision, Put on paper. <laughs> but it's hard to do. It's hard to execute. It's really hard to do, and it's really hard to execute at scale, in particular. And that's, you know, and to be able to do it at scale, I think is how they Well, I was commenting really on when so. I was tweeting on the plane, because I love when I get on the plane and do all my power tweeting and Facebook updating, because I have all that time in the seat. But <laughs> I said, this is a bubble-proof market. Visualization, big data, certainly the growth is the total adjustable market, the TAM, mm -hmm. as Jeff and Dave always talk about, is huge. Mm -hmm. Every company's going to need visualization. But it's truly bubble-proof. Um, what I like about Tableau is, what gets my attention, more of a personal nuance that, or a tweak that I have, is that they built the company from the ground up without outside capital, mm -hmm. and got critical mass, they built the platform, they built the rocket ship, they had rocket fuel, and they just added more with venture capital and went public. So, mm -hmm. the DNA of the company has come from customer-centric product excellence, mm -hmm. driven by the founders, mm -hmm. not Here's a bunch of gas. Let's see if the ship can blow blow right. up or go to the, right. go into orbit. So, which a lot of those companies are going to start to see this now, third year into the big data space. Those companies might not make it. Mm -hmm. So, the question to you is, what should we look for for those kinds of companies that are going to be blowing up in midair? Well, what, I think, what, what are the signals? Well, you know, I mean, you can talk about blowing up with an overabundance of venture capital, but obviously, venture capital can do a lot of good in the right place. But I think the cultural foundation in customer success, customer focus and customer success, where you know, at what point the money comes in is you know, kind of relevant, and I agree with you. you know, an organization that starts off with let's make customers successful as opposed to let's go raise a lot of money probably has a bit of a jump there in terms of a mindset, and I think that was the point you were trying to make. 
So, uh, but yeah, I think yeah. when you've got those two things together, then you, you know they can kind of make each other much better. So, and that, that's exactly. What's so happening we have a here. question from Crowd Chat from Bert Lattimore. Question to okay. you, Chris: Does Vertica see Oracle as a competitor? Is there a trend of Vertica customers replacing Oracle? We've heard some of that at other conferences. Yes and yes, no doubt. So absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Now you know we have like a, we have a, we have a ton of respect for Oracle as well, but. But absolutely, yes. Uh, we've heard you know, some big wins there. Um, you know, Oracle certainly in the in big data space. I mean, I'm sure I can't wait to see Oracle Open World coming up. The queue will be there live. Mm -hmm. We'll see what Larry def defines as they're in the, in the business again. Um, do you see purpose-built systems continuing to go? We saw at VMworld the rise of Nutanix, EVO Rails. You're starting mm -hmm. to see converged infrastructure packages. Certainly, HP mm -hmm. has, uh, has, a, has, a, has do. a dog in that fight. Yep. Um, how's that affect your business? Um, you know, I think there's customers that go for that approach, and then there's customers that kind of go for the more open approach. So, and we try to serve them both, really, because obviously being part of the parent organization we are, we, we have the ability to kind of go either way on that. So, and Chris. Sounds uh, like we're getting another question, or are we out no, of time? No, no, I'm, I'm out of time, but oh, okay. I want to extend a little bit. I'm getting the hook here for not going. <laughs> um, Chris Selland, VP of Marketing Biz Dev at HP Vertica, uh, part of the HP software team, doing great. Congratulations, good to see you in the ecosystem. Uh, pounding the pavement, as pressing always. the palm, pressing the flesh as they say. This is theCUBE, live in Seattle, Washington. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break at Tableau for Data 14, we'll be right back.